Before you even press play, let me warn you, this is not a story about fries. This is a story about how something so simple became something so engineered, people do not even recognize what they are eating anymore because everyone thinks they know McDonald's fries. They are the comfort food, the nostalgia, the golden standard. But what if I told you that behind that perfect crunch, behind that perfect smell, behind the world's most iconic side dish, there is a list of secrets long enough to fill an entire food lab? Today, we are pulling that list apart. Ingredient by ingredient, truth by truth. And once you hear what is actually inside the fries you have been eating your whole life, you will never look at them the same way again. Here is the official ingredient list. Potatoes, canola oil, soybean oil, hydrogenated soybean oil, natural beef flavor, hydrolyzed wheat, hydrolyzed milk, citric acid, dimethyl polysiloxane, dextrose, sodium acid, pyrophosphate, salt, corn oil, tea, BHQ. Wait, hold on, what? Before you even take your first bite, before the crunch hits your teeth, before the salt melts on your tongue, before that warm, nostalgic smell grabs your brain and drags you straight back to childhood, you are already looking at a list of 19 ingredients. 19. For a food that should only need three. Let that sink in for a second. Fries are not complicated. They were never complicated. A potato, a bit of oil, a sprinkle of salt. But somehow, somewhere along the way, that simple recipe was pushed aside and replaced with something else. Something engineered. Something built layer by layer, ingredient by ingredient, until the fries you think you know are no longer potatoes with seasoning. They are a formula, a design, a blueprint of taste and addiction. And the deeper you go down this list, the stranger it gets. Because these are not ingredients your grandmother kept in her kitchen. These are not things you will find on a spice rack. These are not items anyone could even pronounce without slowing down and sounding them out like a nervous child reading in front of the class. Sodium acid pyrophosphate, TBHQ. Why are chemicals with names longer than your phone number hiding inside something as innocent as fries? And why has nobody ever told you this? Think about that. How many times have you eaten these fries? Tens, hundreds, thousands? McDonald's sells millions of servings a day. Millions of people lifting the same red carton to their mouths with absolutely no idea what is actually inside. It makes you wonder if something as simple as a fry needs 19 separate components just to exist, what exactly are we eating? And more importantly, why did they go through this much effort to turn three ingredients into 19? Because once you hear what each of these does, you will realize this is not food, this is engineering, this is chemistry, this is addiction disguised as a side order. Dimethylpolysiloxane. Just look at that word for a moment. You do not see it, you stare at it, your brain slows down like it is suddenly learning a new language because this is not food vocabulary, this is chemistry. And yet, somehow it is in your fries. Dimethylpolysiloxane is a silicone-based anti-foaming agent, a chemical designed to stop bubbling oil from foaming up during deep frying. Pause there. Because ask yourself a simple question. Why would fries foam? Why is something as innocent as a potato suddenly behaving like a science experiment? Why does McDonald's need a specialized substance, a lab-grade silicone compound, just to keep a fryer calm? Fries should not foam unless something else is going on, unless this food has stopped behaving like food. And here is the part that flips the story upside down. Dimethylpolysiloxane is not just used in fryers. It is also used in silly putty. Yes, that stretchy, bouncy toy you played with as a child. The toy that could stretch across a room, the toy that could bounce like a rubber ball, that exact same chemical appears in the fries. Millions of people eat every single day. Now think about that. The next time you reach into a McDonald's bag and pull out a fry that has been sitting there for 40 minutes but still holds its shape like it has been preserved under glass. Have you ever wondered why McDonald's fries never break, never sag, never look dead, even after surviving the apocalypse at the bottom of a paper bag, they do not behave like potatoes. They behave like something engineered not to fail. Still hungry? 
Now that we have cracked open the first ingredient bomb, it is time to look deeper because the real story does not start with chemicals. It starts with flavor. And the ingredient that exposes everything is the one almost nobody ever notices, natural beef flavor. Read that again. Beef flavor in fries. Most people never see it. Most people never question it. But this single ingredient tells you more about McDonald's than any documentary ever will. Because if you are in the United States, your fries are not vegetarian, not even close. They have not been for decades. And here is where the story becomes even stranger. In the United Kingdom, there is no beef flavor, none, zero. Their fries are completely vegetarian and always have been. Same fries, different continents, different ingredients, different rules. Why? Why is a multinational company serving one country a cleaner version and another country a version padded with unnecessary additives? Are taste preferences really that different or is something else happening behind the scenes? Because this is not a recipe difference. This is a regulation difference. Some countries do not allow certain additives. Some countries have stricter guidelines. Some countries draw a line at flavor enhancers like this. But in America, the line is blurry and natural beef flavor is not even a single ingredient. It is a blend made from beef derivatives, wheat derivatives, and milk derivatives, a tiny flavor bomb designed to hit your brain in the exact way the company wants. This is not about taste, this is about control. Hydrolyzed wheat and hydrolyzed milk. These seem harmless until you understand what hydrolyzed actually means. Hydrolyzed proteins are processed into free glutamates, which act like flavor amplifiers, a hidden cousin of monosodium glutamate. It does not just make food taste good, it makes food taste hyper real. It hits the brain harder than natural flavor ever could. It keeps you reaching into the carton again and again and again. Your taste buds are not being satisfied. They are being stimulated, trained, conditioned. But the investigation does not stop there. Next on the list is a compound that sounds like it belongs inside a car battery. Compound, sodium acid pyrophosphate. Sodium, say it slowly. Does that sound like something that belongs anywhere near a potato? Potato, this ingredient keeps fries from turning gray after they are cut. Not because gray fries are unsafe, but because gray fries are unappealing. McDonald's is not protecting your health. They are protecting your appetite. They are protecting the illusion. By now, the pattern is undeniable. Every ingredient on that list has a job. Not a job that benefits you, but a job that benefits the product. A job that protects the, fr the fry, not the person eating it. The story takes its darkest turn. Hidden inside that list, quiet and forgettable, is a preservative only four letters long. Preservative, TBHQ. It looks tiny, it looks harmless, but behind that short acronym is a chemical with a resume that reads like a warning label. TBHQ is not there to keep you healthy. It is there to keep oil alive. It slows decay, prevents rancidity, stops time, at least for the food, not for you. Think about that. A preservative created to extend the life of a product slowly chips away at the health of the person consuming it. Countries have looked at TBHQ and said, absolutely not. Japan banned it. Other nations refused to approve it. Some questioned its long-term safety. Absolutely. But in the United States, it is approved, widely used, served daily, and eaten by millions. United States. Why? Because when global corporations face different rules in different countries, they do not aim for the highest standard. They settle for the lowest one allowed. It is cheaper, it is simpler, and it ensures the product stays perfect, even when the reality behind that perfection is anything but. But this is not even the darkest part. TBHQ is just one example, one symptom of a much bigger truth. Fast food is not built like food. It is built like a system. A system that requires fries to survive freezing, shipping, reheating, and serving in 40,000 restaurants across the world and still taste exactly the same. Real food cannot do that. Real food softens, real food browns, real food wilts and breaks. But McDonald's fries do not. They do not wilt, they do not change, they do not age like normal food because they are not just food anymore. They are engineered stability, engineered flavor, engineered addiction, 
and here comes the wake up moment. These fries were not redesigned for your benefit. They were redesigned for the company's convenience. Every extra ingredient added was not added for your health. It was added for one purpose, to make the product unstoppable, to freeze better, to travel easier, to last longer, to look perfect, to taste perfect, to hook you faster than real food ever could. You were not asked, you were not informed, you were not given the choice. The recipe evolved and you kept eating it because why would you not? They are the world's most iconic fries. But here's the truth that hits hardest of all. If something as simple as a potato needs a small army of chemicals just to stay perfect, then what you are craving is not the food. You are craving the engineering, the formula, the manipulation perfected over decades. And once you see the pattern, once you understand why each additive exists, and who it truly benefits, you realize the fry you are holding is not a snack. It is a design, a design created to bypass the rules of nature so it can lock into the reward centers of your brain. This is not the part where you panic. This is the part where you wake up. Because if this much effort is required to make something as basic as fries, then you must ask yourself, what else have we been eating that is not really food anymore? And that question, once whispered, never goes quiet again. So here we are, 19 ingredients later, and the fries you thought were simple are anything but. What should have been potatoes, oil, and salt turned into a formula, engineered, preserved, stabilized, and designed to hook you with every bite. Some countries get cleaner versions, others get the chemical cocktail, and now, you know exactly which one you have been eating. Because once you look behind the curtain and understand what is really inside those fries, you cannot pretend it is just food anymore. This was never about potatoes. It was about everything they did not want you to notice. And trust me, this is only the beginning. Thank you for watching Fryspiracy. Stay curious, stay awake, and I will see you in the next exposure.